Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I've been very busy for the last couple of months because I was studying for the last exams at the university. In fact, I graduated the last week and I'm very happy for that. So today I wanted to show you something I've been using for a while, but I didn't realize it could be very useful to you guys. You know, it's one of those things you use, you take it for granted, and then you realize that, that could be a bit more interesting than usual daily stuff. Uh, in fact, even a couple of friends of mine asked, how did I achieve this cute little thing? And as you may have already seen, I'm talking about the Wake on LAN protocol. Now, what is it? It's basically a feature that allows you to power on your computer via the network. So say you're in another room, you need a file stored on your computer, uh, or you want to SSH into it, but you left the power off. So you switch it on without having to press the physical power button, and you're ready to go. And of course, if you set the port forwarding on your router, uh, you will be able to do that remotely, even if you're away from home. Uh, so to make it work, you need a computer with a wired network card, and both the BIOS and the card need to support the Wake on LAN protocol. And uh, you cannot do this over Wi-Fi, of course. Uh, now, my laptop being a ThinkPad, it of course supports all of the business features you may possibly want. Because, you know, this is actually more of a business feature. Uh, I think it's very useful if you have a server or, you know, some kind of office with a lot of computers on the network. But anyway, let's jump right in. Uh, the first thing you want to do is power on your computer and go to your BIOS setup. Now, this first part will of course be different between different computers. Uh, but on my ThinkPad X220, you push the blue ThinkVantage button, then press F1, and when the setup appears, uh, you go into Configuration, Network, and enable Wake on LAN. Now, here I left it on AC only, but if you want this feature to work even on battery power, you can do that, as you can see. The second parameter, I left it there, the way it was. It says it's needed for the MAC address to be visible on the network, so I didn't touch it. Anyway, the other side, sort of, of this process is basically complete. Now we are on my usual i3 desktop and we want to configure the card to enable the feature. So we need to open up a terminal and use IP link to show the available network cards. Uh, you want to take note of the name of your Ethernet interface and also of its MAC address uh, because we will need it later to send the actual Wake on LAN signal to the computer. Now, with a software called ETH tool, and it is available on your standard Arch repositories, uh, you want to check if the feature is enabled on your card, and you want this uh, Wacon parameter to be set to G, which means the card accepts magic packet activity, and more of that later. So, if it's not G, you can use the same ETH tool software to change this parameter, uh, and check again to see if the changes uh, you made took effect. Uh, now you need this setting to be permanent, of course, or you will be able to use this function just once. So I think the easiest way to do this uh, is by setting up a systemd service. Now, of course, you can write your own service if you want, uh, but being the AUR, the usual powerful resource for us Arch users, uh, we already have an AUR package available that does that for you. So go ahead and install wol-systemd from Yaourt, or Packer if you have it, uh, now, I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. And the only thing left to do is just enable the service. So, systemctl enable wol-systemd at and then the name of your Ethernet interface. Uh, with this done, the whole configuration is pretty much complete. Now, I have to say, I didn't bother that much searching for Windows software that allows you to send the Wake on LAN signal to the target computer, because I've always been using many advanced features like this, mainly under Linux. But anyway, we are now on another computer running Windows 10, so I actually have Debian installed on the Windows subsystem for Linux, so I'm going to use that. Uh, so you need to install the Wake on LAN package, and I'm using APT of course in this case, uh, then you can just type Wake on LAN and the MAC address of the target computer to send the so-called magic packet to turn it on. Uh, so the magic packet is actually the packet that will turn the computer on. Uh, but since I will never be able to remember the MAC address of the ThinkPad, I've stored it in a bash uh, alias so that I just need to type WOLTP. Now let me switch back to the camera view and you will see 
that as soon as I press enter on my main laptop, the ThinkPad turns itself on. Now, I should point out that it will first try to do a network boot, and once it fails, it will fall back to the usual boot from the internal drive. Uh, I don't know if you can disable that, you probably can, uh, but I didn't bother much as it takes a minute or two, but then it just boots normally into Arch. Now, you can do this even remotely if you wish, uh, but you should set a static IP address for the computer, then open a port on your router and forward the port to the IP address that you have set. Uh, then it's just a case of feeding uh, uh, the remote DNS and the port to wake on LAN. It's very easy. But personally, I don't need that, so I didn't configure it. What I usually do if I need to wake up the ThinkBud when I'm not home and I didn't bring it with me is I SSH remotely in my, uh, into my Raspberry Pi, and then from there I send a magic packet through the local network, and I have the same alias with the MAC address on the Raspberry Pi. Then I wait a couple of minutes for the boot process to finish, and then I SSH locally into my ThinkPad. Uh, now, in this case, I know the IP address, and it usually doesn't change if it's not taken by another device, of course. But anyway, in rare cases, this fails, or I'm not sure what the right IP is, I can, for instance, scan the network or access to my router configuration page from the Raspberry Pi desktop via VNC and look at the list of the connected devices. And you know, if I'm not home, chances are that not much stuff will be connected and the ThinkPad will be easy to identify, of course. So that's pretty much it. This was a very neat and useful trick and it was pretty easy too, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like if you did and subscribe to my channel to support me. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I will see you very soon. Ciao!